Welcome back to the Java tutorial. And today we're going to be implementing a stack using an array. So right now I'm in a class called main in the main method. I'll make one more class and I'll call it array stack. So now we have a class that we're actually going to be using for our, for our actual stack. And we're just going to need some fields so we get to find some fields. We could say private int array. And the reason we're making it private, so like the user actually doesn't like use like the array, they'll, they'll actually think they're using an actual stack. And then we could say private int, and we'll call it top, which would be like the top of the array, or the top of the stack in this case. And then we're gonna have a, have a constructor, so we could say public, and the name of our actual class, which would be array stack. And in there we could initialize a variable. So we could say array equals to new int. And in there we could uh, we could say uh, we could specify however many elements you want in there. We could do it's still 128. That's pretty good size. And we can initialize top equal to zero because an array starts at zero. And then we're actually gonna like implement all the methods that are normal like like a stack would have like push, pop, peak. So let's do push, which is just like the add method. We could do public void push. And in this case the push method is gonna receive like an um this is an argument of type integer. Because uh, this isn't a this is gonna be a stack of integers, so we're gonna pass in an integer. We could just call it x, integer x. We're gonna pass this in from the main method, from the main, yeah, from the main method. And then we're gonna check something real quick. We could say if top greater than array dot length, if that's the case, that means top's bigger than the length, so it's full. So we could just say return just to escape that. But if it's not, we could say array at top equal to x and then we can increment top to go to the next element pretty much so if you go back to our main method if we make an object of the array stack class we could do array stack and then we'll just call it a stack we go to new array stack let's say stack dot and then we'll have the add method or the in this case the push method and the push method is going to accept it's giving us an error because it's going to accept something of type integer because that's what we are pretty much asking for an integer so we could pass in 12 and then the actual stack would have 12 but let's uh let's continue doing all the methods and okay, now let's define the actual pop method so what the pop method does it gets like the like first element of the stack and it's going to return it so we could do public int Pop. And that's the reason we're making the, the actual method of type int because we have to return something. So we can say int uh, returning and we can set that equal to negative one. So this variable is going to return negative one if this if statement doesn't execute. We can say if top greater than zero, that means there's something in there. If that's the case, we could decrement our top variable to go to like the last element and then we could say returning equal to array and top you could have done this these two lines in one line but I think it's easier if you actually see what's going on and then we actually have to return something we could just <laughs> it sounds funny return returning <laughs> so if there's this is going to execute it's going to set that equal to negative one if this doesn't like set it equal to anything else it's going to return negative one because there's like an error but if top is greater than zero we're going to set array at top equal to returning which would override this negative one so that's our pop method so now let's define a very similar method to the pop method we could do public int peak so peak is pretty much the same thing, but instead of like actually removing the top element, we're just gonna be returning it to the user. 
So a lot of the code I could reuse. We could uh, say int return equal negative one. So if our actual case doesn't like, execute our if statement, then it's just gonna return negative one. So we could say returning equal to array at top minus one. And then we could literally copy and paste this again. Say return the returning variable. And that's that. Oh, semicolon. Okay. So now we have another variable, another method. This one's a little different. We can say public. This is going to be a type boolean. It's going to be is empty. So this is just going to return true or false if like the actual like stack is empty. And this is actually an easier way to do this. We could say return top equals equals zero and if it's equal zero it's going to tr return true but if it equals false it's going to if it equals or say if it equals zero it's going to return true it is empty but if it's like one or two it's going to return false now we can do another method called public int size this one's pretty self-explanatory we're going to be returning an integer which would be how big our how big our stack is so we can return top and then we can have a method just to clear our actual stack we'll say public will be a void method because we're not returning anything or clear and we're really not deleting anything we're just setting our top variable to zero again so whatever we had, we're going to ignore it, and we're going to start at zero, because we really can't delete elements from an array. We kind of can, but it's just really hard. And then I'm feeling a little nice, so I'm going to give them a two-string method. we do public string two-string. So we're going to override the two-string method. It's just going to return a string representation of our actual stack. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to make a different variable named call it x and I'm gonna set that equal to top because I don't want to destroy my top variable and then I'll set um we'll say string s we'll just have it empty for right now okay so we could use a for loop to iterate like through the actual stack we could start at the end though we can do for int i equal to x i greater than zero and then we could decrement i and in there we could do s plus equals and then we could put our array which is named array to x minus one and then we'll put a comma in there so I can separate it. And this is going to return a string representation of our actual stack. And then after that, we just decrement x. But we're also getting an error because we have to return it. So I'll just let it do it for me. And then it'll just automatically return s for us. And it looks like we're done. So if we go back to the main method, we have stack.push12. We'll do stack dot push a good number thirty four and then we say stack dot two string this shouldn't give us anything because we have to put it inside a print statement now that we do that now we should get some actual text it's going to be thirty four and twelve which makes sense because like a stack, whatever you put in first goes to the bottom. I think it was um, first in, last out. Yeah. So let's, let's keep testing it. Let's do stack and then we'll enter 58. Let's run the two string method one more time. 58, 34, 12. The little commas are messed up, but that's fine. Now let's stack. 
So the pop method is gonna like, I don't know how it sounds, you're gonna delete the last element and store it. So we got rid of the 58, we could do, is it of type string? I wanna see if it actually stores it. Out of type int. So let's actually print it out. See if it actually kept it after deleting it. If it did, it should be stored inside. Yeah, so it actually 58 was removed, but since it was popped, we could store it inside of X. So that's good. Um, what other methods did we define? We have push, we, uh, we tried pop works, peak, let's try peak. We do stack dot peak. So this should be stored inside of, we can store it inside of a variable X again. And then print it out. We can print out X. And this time I didn't, we can actually run it one more time, see if it actually doesn't erase it. So it doesn't erase it, but it does store it. It does get the first element of the stack, and we can store it inside a variable, which would be x. That works. Uh, let's see, boolean is empty. So let's define a boolean variable. Boolean x again. Stack dot is empty. And if we print it out, it should be false. Out, and let's print out X. So my cone. And the stack is not empty, so that's correct. Let's do the size. Let's see, we could just print out stack.size. In this case, it would be three. Yeah, which it would be. Oh, let's clear it and see if the clear method works. So we could do stack dot clear, and then we'll run the two string method again. We could print it, and nothing prints because the two string because the clear works. And I think that's all our methods. They all seem to be working pretty fine, or pretty well. And if this helped you at all, just leave a like and subscribe.